in isochoric process volume of gas is constant so work done by environment on the system is equal to zero so we can write first law of thermodynamics for isochoric process as q equal to change in internal energy of the system change in internal energy of the system is equal to mass of the gas specific heat capacity of the gas into change in temperature of the gas here m is mass of the gas which is equal to number of moles times molar mass of gas into c delta t as it is given that number n is equal to 1 mole and change in temperature of the gas is 1 kelvin so this gives us q equal to c m so this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of gas by 1 kelvin now for isobaric process pressure of the system is constant so we can write first law of thermodynamics as work done by environment on system plus heat environment to system is equal to change in internal energy of the system as work done by environment on the system is equal to minus p into change in volume plus q is equal to change in internal energy which is equal to mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature this gives us p delta v that is equal to nr delta t by using rdl gas equation plus q equal to mc delta t this gives us q equal to mc delta t plus nr delta t we can write m that is mass of gas equal to number of moles times molar mass so this gives us q equal to n into capital m c delta t plus nr delta t nr delta t s n is equal to 1 mole n delta t is equal to 1 kelvin this gives us q equal to cm plus r so this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of gas by 1 kelvin so in isobaric process q is equal to cm plus r in isochoric process q is equal to c into m as r is universal gas constant and r is a positive number so amount of heat required to raise temperature by 1 kelvin 
in isobaric process is more than the heat required to raise the temperature by 1 Kelvin in isochoric process. So amount of heating depends upon the process.